So, Vitaly Lilletin just released a new training video. These are always very interesting to watch, but one thing stood out to me. He's doing deadlifts. Why is he doing deadlifts? Isn't he training for arm wrestling? Then another thing stood out to me. For an elite level arm wrestler, even more so one who sits in his truck for long stretches, he has great posture and seems to be able to move fluidly like a regular person should. Then I remembered, most of the Russian or Ukrainian or maybe even the Eastern Bloc elites also keep a fairly balanced posture, despite their high level ultra specific venue of training. And then I recalled the USA elites like Devon Lorette and Michael Todd, who, and this might be a slight exaggeration, seem to walk around looking like a knotted ball of sore, inflamed, internal rotation and shortened tendons. This was the way Denis Tseplenkov looked too, especially towards the later stages of his career. But even Levan Saganesvili, despite his massiveness and elite status, seem only slightly internally rotated at the shoulders and retains a somewhat decent extension through the elbows. Could this be down to different styles of training? The Eastern Old Soviet schools seem to favour much more in the way of basic compound exercises as part of their training systems, while athletes like Lerat tend to favour much more specific exercises, outright stating that he only trains his competitive arm. In the USA too, we have Todd Hutchings, who also follows a more Soviet-style programme. From what I've learned, he applies the West Side conjugate methods of broad, wide training over hyper-narrow and specific. This system was taken by Louis Simmons of Westside Barbell from the research and documentation of a Soviet system itself. The Soviet system being famous for, drugs aside, producing some of the best athletes of all time, especially in strength focused sports. Whereas outside of the ex-Soviet slash Eastern Bloc countries, there seems to be a much greater focus on very sport specific training styles, almost like the Bulgarian weightlifting system made infamous through the 80s and 90s under Ivan Abajiev with a very intense multiple daily training schedule of only the exact movements of the sport itself and very, very few assistance exercises. Ryan Blue Bowen and Davon Larat are both good examples of the system, and there is also Krasimir Kostadinov who has in fact met with the late Ivan Abajiev who influenced him to alter his training style in favour of a more specific sport system, although prior to this he had trained more generally. This is of course only the reading of the top level elite athletes, but not much is known about the systems feeding athletes into the school from an earlier age, and as usual drugs play a massive role in camouflaging what precisely worked from the system or the drugs in isolation or whether it was more of a synergy between the two which exaggerates the positive attributes of each. Of course these are cherry picked examples of athletes but they work well to construct an argument for different training styles so please don't think I'm criticising your favourite athletes. Back to Laletin's deadlifts, they aren't anything spectacular, he doesn't look like a trained powerlifter doing this for the sake of heavy weight and the weight he is moving here seems pretty comfortable for him. 160 kilograms or 352 pounds is a decent weight to be lifting casually for general training purposes. He's probably lifting well over 200 kilograms or 440 pounds if he ever decided to aim heavier, but what would be the point of him outside of fun? If anything, the deadlift hits almost the exact opposite muscles that arm wrestling aims to develop. Arm wrestling, like most combat sports, is a very closed and internal sport, so athletes eventually tend to become rounded forwards and into themselves, whereas athletes like calisthenic sportsmen, rowers or weightlifters, sports with a more active focus on the back of the whole unit, tend to be more open in the chest shoulder girdle, with the shoulder socket itself set more backwards and aligned with the midline. Now obviously with arm wrestling, having the shoulder itself more forward from the body's midline might be advantageous since it allows the athletes, especially ones with shorter arms, to be more over the table without having to lean the entire torso against the edge, which would mean not only a higher probability of them hitting their hand against themselves for a foul, but there would also be more body needed to be pulled back before it could be used as a weight against the opponent's hand. And that also means there is a lot more room between the elbow and the torso, so the lat and upper back is much more stretched away, meaning accessing that tight back pressure lock position takes more time and energy and the position is left more open for longer. Of course this is all varied across different height athletes, you can see here that Devon is taller and so all of his arm bones are more vertically stacked in the start, while Michael Todd's humerus is much more horizontal 
and his lat to arm and elbow joints are much more open. With his torso still more vertical than the rat's, he is visibly aiming to fall from here into back pressure to try and open the rat's arm. So even though Lerat is more forward in his shoulder posture, he can escape the drawback since he is tall enough to counteract them. But Michael Todd, attempting to access that back pressure, is left much more open due to his height being less than Lerat's. Back to Lerletin, who is also very tall, perhaps almost too tall for the height the table gives, but here in this East vs East match you can see in the setup both are very tightly packed between their humerus and the lat, in a similar position to how Devon starts against Todd, but watching the two after the go command we can see Lerat being much more passive with the back pressure, mostly posting and relying on his inward cupping ability to hold his ground and wear out Todd. Whilst Lerletin and Sagneshvili are both immediately in the back pressure tug of war, but they seem to be quite well matched until Levan brings in the side pressure to lever his body weight against the Latin's opening arm. Both of these athletes we have seen performing various basic compound exercises regularly as part of their training systems. Whereas from what I can tell, Devon does very little except tabletop training slash tabletop cable training. We can also see from his time doing other exercises with Juji that he's very out of ideal patterns here, so probably does not do them much, if at all. So it's hard to say which system is better, perhaps when we finally see Levan vs Lerat we will have some more conclusive evidence to work with, but it seems to me that the Eastern Bloc or Old Soviet School, which seems to be heavily influenced by the Soviet weightlifting and general athletics approach to training for sports, gathered through decades of intense research, that is, an awful lot of very broad basic compound movements and then specific sports practice done separately, either by distinction in loading or entire periods of dedicated blocks of time to each aspect the sport requires. It seems to me that this style of training might be better, if even for the health and posture benefits, not to mention the emphasis on full body strength and, in arm wrestling, a much more active and accessible back pressure element to the athlete. It will keep them mobile and more generally strong and healthy, and able to train much more comfortably for a longer period of time, and if nothing else provides them with a much more balanced physique to work with. So the conclusion is, don't be too specialised, unless you are Devon Lorette, who this clearly works for for now. Instead, train yourself more like a generally strong and athletic athlete, as most of the Eastern Bloc seem to, so that you have greater access to more style than should be generally more flexible on the table if the need arises. And that's about it. Remember, if you like the video, then like the video. If you aren't subscribed, then subscribe. And if you have any thoughts on the different schools of training, or if you feel like I'm way off here, or anything you feel like sharing, then go ahead and fill my comments with your comments. Other than that, we're done for now, so see you later.